Hi my learning friends. So once again welcome to your own learning platform Learn Forward and we are here with your grammar book The Grammar by Feather Cap. This is for grade 6 and today we are going to start chapter 6 of your book. We have learned so much about nouns before this. So nouns are naming words and what about the words that can replace them? They are called pronouns yes and in this chapter we'll be learning in detail about pronouns let's get started yes wonderful pronoun is a word that replaces a noun okay let's just have a review exercise from our past learning so what do we have here read the following paragraph and underline pronouns in it so i think you can just quickly do that come on give me the answer Okay, we bought a finishing rod as a gift for his sister, Richa. His, no children, his is not a pronoun here, mind you. We'll get to know ahead why this is not a noun. He told her, yes, perfect. He and her, these are pronouns here. He told her that they would, perfect answer, that they would go finishing at the lake, fishing at the lake on Sunday. Richa was very excited. Again, you have a pronoun. Yes, she took the fishing rod and ran towards the garden gate. Yes, again, she. She opened it hurriedly. Perfect answer. It is another pronoun here. And called her neighbor. No children. Again, just like I told you, his is not the pronoun here. Because, okay, just let me tell you. You have learnt it earlier. Let's recall. His is immediately followed by a noun. That is why it is not a pronoun. It is an adjective. We have done it earlier also. And we will be learning it again when we do pronouns in detail. Similarly, when you talk about her neighbor, her. After her, you find the word noun here, neighbor. So again, her is not the pronoun here. It is again adjective. So just let's read ahead. Uh, her neighbor, Rina. She wanted to show her friend, yes, she wanted to show her friend the wonderful gift. And any other pronoun do you find here? Perfect. Do you, what, what do you say about her here? Is it a pronoun now I have just explained to you? No, it is not a pronoun. So we have not underlined it because it is followed by a noun friend. Could you recall the rule? Okay, so let's get started with the journey ahead on pronouns. What is a pronoun? I just told you pronoun is a word that replaces a noun. That means a word that is used in place of a noun. And you know why do we use pronouns? Just to, yes, just to uh, omit the repetition. Like it seems like you are chanting a name. Neha, 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 Neha. No, not every time. So for the first time only, I'll be saying Neha. Neha is my friend. She is brilliant. She's a brilliant girl. She reads in my class. I play with her, right? So in place of saying Neha, Neha, Neha every time, we are just changing the noun to a word, which becomes a pronoun. Fine. So I have example here. Rohan arrived late. He had a headache. So here the highlighted word he, this is a pronoun because what does this he refer to here? Who had a headache? Rohan. So in place of using Rohan here, we are using he. So it's replacing a noun. This is a pronoun, right? So let's go ahead with the kinds of pronouns you have done in your previous grades also. The first one is personal pronoun and I'm sure this table will help you recall everything. So what are personal pronouns children? The personal pronouns are used for a person or a thing. Right? Now here, what uh, pronoun is to be used depends on whether we are talking about the subject, whether we are talking about the object or we are talking in a possessive case. And the second thing is we have to consider the uh, gender also, masculine, feminine and apart from that the number of subject or object also, whether we are talking about something in singular or in plural. So taking into consideration, we'll just look at this uh, chart table again for you to help recalling everything. 
Now in person pronouns we have three persons, first person, second person, third person. So do you remember what do they stand for? First person is the first person. Let me just reintroduce this to you. First person is the speaker. That means the person who is speaking is referred to as first person. So this is speaker. Second person is Yes, with speaker you have understood now. Perfect answer. Second person is the listener. That means to whom we are talking. And third person is somebody about whom we are talking. He or she, that noun is not a part of our conversation. That, uh, that is not involved in conversation. That is only uh, being referred to. Right? So third person is the one referred to that per that third person may or may not be present there but i am not talking like here we have uh, so many students and i am the speaker so i am the first person i am talking to ria so she is the second person but to ria when i am talking i am talking about all other students in the class right so you all become third person because i am not talking to you but yes, when I am talking to the whole class, of course, I am first person, I am the speaker and I am addressing all of you. So, all of you together make the second person plural. Is that clear to you? Okay. So, uh, let's read some examples here. Uh, we have the sentences like I just uh, told you that uh, in pronouns, we have to just make sure whether we are using it as a subject or object. So, what is subject and what is object? Just like we did in nouns in the previous session, we have the cases in pronouns also. The subjective cases when the sub, uh, pronoun is used as subject, the objective cases when it is used as an object. So depending on subject, object, depending on singular, plural, depending on male, female and also on first person, second person, third person, we make this chart. So we have these categories of first, second and third person. Then we go about a number, whether we are talking about singular or plural in each of these persons. So we have singular, plural, singular, plural, singular, plural for first person, second person and third person individually. Going ahead, the nominative case is the subjective case. So when the pronouns are used as subject, we have the nominative case. When they are used as object, we have the objective case. And last but not the least is the possessive case that shows possession. Fine. So let us read out the words here. For nominative case in first person, what do we refer to? I and then we all are studying. So I is singular and we is plural. But when we talk about the second person, you are my student, you all are my students. Or even if I say you are my students. So how did you get to know whether I am talking about singular or plural? Let us write the sentences here. You are, sorry my student or even if I write you are a student it's fine you are a student and you are students now look at these two sentences children what do you observe in which sentence am I talking about singular uh, in which sentence I am talking about plural that is because here I am using you, you, same subject I am referring to. And then of course the verb will also be same. Whether we talk about one or many, we are using plural verb here with you. Right? Yes. Coming to the next part ahead in the sentence. See this sentence gives only student which is singular. That means the, plural, the pronoun you here is used as singular pronoun. And when I see here, I check it out, it is students. So this is singular, this is plural. That means my pronoun here is also plural. So we use the same words in second person. May it be for singular or plural in all the three cases. So it will remain you. Coming to third person, when I am talking about a male, I say he. When I talk about a female, I say she. When I talk about some animals or when I talk about things, I use it. But when I use that, all these three, when we just group them, we put them in plural form, they become they. 
right each one of these whether i am talking of males in plural whether i am talking of females in plural whether i am talking about living non living together or they should be in plural i use they here fine now coming to the objective case when the pronoun is used as object he becomes how do you remember you you have been speaking english so well and you can say he has given me a book but if you give the book what will you say i gave him a book very good now he is the receiver of action he is the object so what word have you used in place of he him perfect so that gives you the objective case and for girls what do you say i gave her so her is the objective case and for non living and animals it remains it right uh, suppose you have a pet what do you say i have a pet it plays with me now it is the subject and i give it food every day so it here becomes the object right so it remains same it does not change it is the same and when we talk about plural they is turned into them in the objective case i hope that's clear good and when we talk about the possessive case first person singular is mine and plural is ours when we talk about second person singular and plural forms are same in second person it is yours see mine ours yours for both singular as well as plural now when you talk about third person for masculine it is the same his h i s is but for feminine female gender it changes to hers that is why i told you her book here her is not the pronoun right similarly his pen although the word is same children even in possessive case a uh, third person singular masculine gender is his but here because you have a noun here this is not a pronoun when you come to it it has no uh, possessive form in pronoun but when you come to theirs that is plural so it becomes theirs this is the plural possessive form it is not the possessive form please possessive pronoun it is the possessive form but it is the possessive adjective it is not the possessive pronoun fine so i have this much is clear to you what is the subjective pronoun the objective pronoun and then the first person second person third person in pro personal pronouns okay so can we move ahead now thank you okay so we have an exercise here fill in the blanks with suitable personal pronouns i gave him a paper dash thanked me now if you gave him a paper who would have thanked you he that's perfect now he is the subject in the sentence she was rude to me if somebody is rude to you don't want to be her friend so who would not like to be friend with her yes because she had been rude to me so i don't want to be friends with her perfect answer so your me object is now the subject in the sentence do you know sabrina dash is my friend now sabrina is neither the speaker nor the listener uh, we are talking and i'm just asking you do you know sabrina she is not a part here of our conversation but we are talking about her so that becomes third person feminine gender good so it will be she is my friend perfect answer vanika lost her kitten and could not find it very good because we are talking about animal her aunt is a doctor dash is a kind woman good we are talking about aunt feminine so she is a kind woman wait here till dash complete my work who is going to complete my work of course i right so wait here till i complete my work okay so you cannot say you complete my work or she completes she will not come anyway because with she it should be complete anyhow my work i am going to complete it so this first person subjective form singular pronoun will come okay coming to next is possessive pronouns we have just done the forms of possessive pronouns in the table for first person second person third person right now you need to understand the difference here between the possessive pronouns and possessive adjectives why her is not the possessive pronoun her book 
So this is not, although it's giving uh, the word for possession, whose book? Her book, right? But still it is not a pronoun. What you have to remember here is if the word which gives an answer to whose is followed by a noun, right? So if this word is followed by a noun, it will not be a pronoun, it will be an adjective. Let's read example here. This bicycle is mine. So possessive words give an answer to whose. We talked about noun possessive case also. There also we put the same question whose. Here also if you put the question whose bicycle. So what answer do you get? Mine. Yes, that is perfect. Now the second sentence is this is my bicycle. Again I put the question whose bicycle. You get the same answer. My, that means belong. both these words means belonging to me, belonging to first person singular pronoun, right? But try to understand the difference here, just focus here. What is the word after this possessive word? Yes, it is a bicycle. And can you tell me, is it a noun or not? Yes, it is a noun. So, whenever the words showing possession are followed by a noun, that means immediately after that word you have a pronoun, it is the possessive adjective not possessive pronoun right but when you look at this sentence after this do you find any noun no so children here pos this word possessive word is the possessive pronoun i hope i am clear to you that's wonderful so we have an exercise for you here fill in the blanks with possessive pronouns i am sure you'll be able to do let's do some of them this bicycle is my brother's. That means it belongs to my brother. That means that car is also, that car is also, that also belongs to your brother. So what will you say? That car is also his. Right? This is the possessive masculine third person singular pronoun children. And we use his as possessive adjective also but what is the difference the same thing we in that case we will say that is also his car now when you say his car so after his you find a noun here that means this is an adjective not a possessive pronoun okay so we'll be just saying that car is also his your cousin's handwriting is better than because we are comparing the cousin's handwriting. So what will we, you say? We are talking about you. I am referring to you. That means yours. Yes, it's better than yours. That bag is dash, but this bag isn't. That bag is, you can just mention anything because there is no reference to the owner of that bag. So you can say that bag is mine, that bag is ours, that bag is his, that bag is hers whatever right so that bag is yours also you can write that bag is mine but this bag isn't so i don't know who is the uh, owner of this atul has lost his map can akash lend him lend him that means if uh, atul has lost we are talking about akash so akash is going to help with one map from his own maps right so what will come here can Akash lend him his, only his children. Map will not come because if we write map here, then his will become a possessive adjective. It will no more be a possessive pronoun. Fine. Next, Devang and Jayant have lost their bicycle. They can use if they want. So they can use mine. They can use ours. They can use yours. Right? But they cannot use theirs only. Please remember that. So they can use his, they can use hers also. You can say any word. So they can use mine. But because only I can give permission for my bicycle, so I prefer writing mine. I don't have the authority to talk about the other one, whether that girl will give or not. Why should I say that, that uh, they can use hers? No. That is why I prefer using here mine. Otherwise, going grammatically, each word, possessive word will be correct here. Fine? Okay. Harry doesn't have a book. Can John share? Now see here we are talking about John just like we talked about Akash. That Akash can lend one uh, map to Atul. 
Similarly, here we are talking about John. So, can John share? Yes, his with him. Right? So, here we are not writing his book. Why? Again, same. If you write book with it, it will become an yes. It will become an adjective. Good. So, is this clear? Possessive pronouns and possessive adjective. So, the journey ahead will be easier for you children. Reflexive pronouns and emphasizing pronouns. We'll take these two together. Now, reflexive word comes from the word reflection. I am sure you would have heard about this word reflection. In your lower grades, you heard about the story of a dog and a piece of bone. That was a greedy dog. And when he looked into the water, what did he see? He saw his own reflection, right? So, this word reflexive comes from the word reflection. Reflection means something that comes back. So, in uh, reflexive pronouns and emphasizing pronouns, children, we have the same words for, for first person, second person, third person. Like for first person, we say myself and ourselves. So, what you have to see is we just add self to the possessive words, right? So, uh, the, to this pronoun, my, to this word, myself. Now, when this, we are talking about plural we will always use selves. So, when you talk about second person singular, you will say yourself. Manish, do your work yourself. I am talking to Manish only. But when I am talking to all my students, I will say children. So, now you are plural. I will say do your work yourselves. Because when we make plural, F changes to V, E, S. Right? Similarly here, my, I am talking about singular, so it will be self. But when I am talking about are, that means plural, so it will become selves, V, E, S. Right? So the words for emphasizing and reflexive pronouns are myself, ourselves, yourself, yourselves. Then third person is himself, herself, itself and themselves. Right? So, how do you make out the same words whether they are reflexive or emphasizing? I will tell you a very easy trick without going through all this. Just let us write a sentence here. I looked myself into the mirror. I have this sentence. Now, first what we will do children, we will quickly pick out the verb. Tell me what is the verb in this sentence? What is the action? Look, very good. So, after picking out the verb, you will find who is doing that action. Who is looking? Who looked? Yes, I looked. Now, when you looked into the mirror, I looked into the mirror. What did I find there? Whom was I looking at? Myself. So, the third thing is, you will find the object also. That means, the receiver of action. Doer of action and then the receiver of action, myself. Now, what do you think, children? Is I and myself the same? That means, when I am looking into the mirror, am I looking at myself? I am looking and what I can see is again myself. So, do you think the action is coming back to me? If it is like that, that means it is reflection. So, it is your reflexive pronoun. Here, myself will be your reflexive pronoun. Okay. And when you come to emphasizing, this goes for emphasis only. That means you are just laying stress to it. You are emphasizing something like he himself offered to help me. Now, what is uh, the what is the verb here? Offered. And when we talk about the doer, who is offering? He is offering. To whom is he offering? He is offering to me. So, he and me are different. That means I am just trying to emphasize by saying himself. Let us look into detail with this example. I just wrote there, I looked myself. into the mirror. I hope you have understood this example. Let me write another one because you might feel that, oh, mirror that always reflects. So, what is the point saying this? Anyhow, I can 
uh, write another sentence. So we'll take another sentence. He hurt himself against a rock. What does that mean? So you had a rock and he was going and he hurt himself. Nobody pushed him. He was going and he just knocked himself there. He hurt himself. Who is the doer of action? He. And who is, the, who is receiving that hurt? He himself is receiving. So are they same? Yes. When they are same, that means this is Reflexive pronoun. You got it correct. This is reflexive pronoun. Right? But on the other way, let's write another sentence. Some students are really very uh, shy or they feel very hesitant or sometimes they are scared of talking to the teacher or talking to any head of the department or the principal. Isn't it? But one day that child could dare to talk to the principal uh, without taking anybody's help. So how would he say to you? How would your friend narrate that to you? He would say, I talked to the principal myself. You can even say this sentence like, I myself talked to the principal. So the position, the place of this word in the sentence will not make difference. I'll just show you how. I myself talked to the principal. And if you go by the steps that I have told you, you'll never make a mistake. I can assure you children. First, we found out the verb. Then we found out who is doing that action. Then we found out who is receiving that action. And after that, we compared whether they are same or they are different. Just this is your mind map to just distinguish between uh, an emphasizing pronoun and a reflexive pronoun. Only this much. So let us pick out the verb here in both the sentences. Talk. Who is talking? Who is the doer? I is the doer. Who is the receiver? Whom, is, whom am I talking to? I am talking to the principal whether you talk about this sentence or you talk about this sentence. In both the sentences, I am talking to the principal. Right? We are not same. I and principal are not same. So when they, the two are not same, that means you are this word myself. Whether we place it at the end or somewhere in the beginning of the sentence, this will be your emphasizing. And you know, by just emphasizing, I mean to say I am showing my courage to do that. Okay? Or sometimes I am making myself feel special about it. Or anybody special about it. Whatever reflexive pronoun we are using. Right? So that shows we are laying emphasis. We are making this word important. So this will be your emphasizing pronoun. So you can just make this mind map to help you remember always. Right? So let's do an exercise here. Rewrite the following sentence. Moving the reflexive emphasizing pronouns correctly to another part of the sentence. Let's see if they are actually misplaced also. After dinner, we ourselves wash the plates. We wash the plates and this will go here. Okay? So your sentence will be after dinner, we washed the plates ourselves. Next. I cannot build a wall myself. Is this correct? Yes, it is fine. Because I am talking about building a wall. So this is the verb, this is the object. So I can put this at the end. You must clean your room yourself. Cleaning of the room is to be done. Right? So it matters, it does not matter if it is at the end. That's fine. You must clean your room yourself. 
If you want to say, you can also say, you must yourself clean your you. That is also correct. But even this is correct. We need not make changes. Ana Hazare himself led the campaign. It's fine. Even if you write here in the beginning, that is fine. Ana Hazare led the campaign himself. If you put it here, that is fine. Nikita may write the article herself. That is perfect. So Nikita... Because it is talking about writing what is to be written article. So if it is here at the end that is perfectly okay children. Right. I just told you that the position the placing of this word will not make any difference. Whether you say I talked to the principal myself or you say I myself talked to the principal that goes perfectly fine. Okay. So you need not get confused with this exercise please. Now, moving ahead is demonstrative pronouns and I told you that uh, the difference between possessive pronouns and possessive adjectives is going to help you ahead with the other types of pronouns also. So, this is another kind where that difference will help because demonstrative pronouns are the words like this, that, these, those and the same words are used as demonstrative uh, adjectives also. What is the difference? These words if they are followed by a noun, then they are definitely not pronouns, they are adjectives. And demonstratives are pointers. So, you are just pointing out, you are specifying this singular, that singular, these plural, those plural. So, you are pointing out these are pointers also. And we uh, always make sure that these are not followed by a noun, right? If they have a noun after them, then it becomes an adjective. Let's do an exercise. Fill in the blanks with suitable demonstrative pronouns. Both the toys are nice, but this one is better than that. Next, dash is a gift from my friend. This is perfect because you are showing it should be in your hand somewhere near only. Next, dash is my bag, but dash is her suitcase. This is my bag. And then we are talking about something away. So we'll say that is her suitcase. Next, our soldiers are better trained than dash of our enemies. Then those of our enemies. Here it is showing belongingness. Pointers. You take dash and I'll take those. So you take these and I'll take those. Fine. Well done. Good. You have given perfect answers. Let's move ahead now. Next coming up is distributive pronouns. Distributive words as it says, that means we are distributing. So words like each, every, they are distributive pronouns and we are talking about, although we are talking about many, but then we are talking about them individually in a distributive sense. So we have examples here. Each of us was given a present. And students see, uh, actually we are talking about everybody, but we are talking about them individually, right? That means I gave individually to each one, fine? But because we are talking about distributive, we are talking about individuality, so they are used as singular subjects. That is why when we are talking about each of us, don't focus on us. We are talking about each distributive, it is, it is in singular uh, capacity. So, we are using the singular verb here. Each of us was given a present. Everyone. Now, everyone is another distributive pronoun. Again, it will be followed by a singular uh, verb. Each of them tried his best in the exam. See, again, here we are using singular possessive word here. Neither. Neither means none of those. So, none of them, neither of them was ready. Again, we are using singular verb here, was ready for a compromise. Either, either means any of. So, either of you is right or only one of you, right? So, you can take either just means you can take any of them and uh, either of you is right, that means one of you is right. I am not sure who, but only one is correct. Now, coming to reciprocal pronouns. Reciprocal uh, you have learnt in maths. What is reciprocal? 
where the numerator changes to denominator. Yes, that is good. So, when we talk about reciprocal pronouns, it actually happens the same way. That means the both, they both exchange. Like we talked to each other. Now, here each other means he is talking to me, I am talking to him. So, it is an exchange, right? So, such words are called reci reci reciprocal pronouns like they looked at each other. We should help one another in times of need. So, these are your reciprocal pronouns when we are just thinking of exchange, right? It is not one way actually. Coming to next is relative pronouns. You get relatives at your place, isn't it? So, what are relatives? Who are relatives, sorry? With whom you have a relation. So, are the relative pronouns. Now, where are they going to make relations, children? Relative pronoun is a pronoun that relates a phrase in a sentence to some other part of the sentence. Like, the boy who stood first. Now, here I am talking about the boy and I am telling about him that he stood first. That boy is my cousin. He stood first. So, I am just referring, I am making a relation here using the word who. The book which you gave me. So, I am talking about the book. I am explaining it that you gave me. So, I am just trying to put them, join them together, make a relation between them. Whether it is in subjective form, in objective form, sometimes in possessive form also. So, I am trying to make relation. Here are the colors that you wanted. So, colors and then you wanted colors. I am just joining them, making a relation. The player whom, see whom they selected. This is now in the objective form. So, I am just relating them with an objective word. He is the actor whose performance. Now, I am talking about the performance of the action actor. So, that means I am talking about possessives, isn't it? So, I am using the word whose. So, these, what you observe is these are... Basically, these are question words, but then here between the sentence, we are using them to show a relation. Except for this, that these are, most of them are, they are all question words. But here they are relating the uh, words and phrases in the sentences, so they are relative pronoun. Now, the word, the noun, which is used just before the uh, relative pronoun, what is that called? Because who, before who, what noun is being used? And what, what is the better way to understand is that this, for which noun this pronoun is used in the sentence, you have to check out. So, for which uh, noun are we using this who? Who stood first? The boy, yes. So, this, this and colors, player, actor, all these because nouns, uh, are just placed, the nouns which are being replaced are always placed just the closest possible to the relative pronouns. So, we can define them the other way also that the noun which comes just before the relative pronoun. But the perfect word is that the, uh, that the nouns which describe the relative pronouns. That means in place of which we are using the relative pronouns, they are called anti- Antecedent. What are they called? Antecedent. So, here the underlined words are the antecedents to the relative pronouns, respective relative pronouns. Is that clear? Good. So, uh, now what you should know when to use these relative pronouns. Who is used when we are talking about people and then especially when we are talking in subjective case. So, which is used for things. Then that, yes, we use who for people, persons, which for things and that can be used for both of them, right? Coming to next, whom is used when we are talking uh, about a noun in objective case. And coming to next, I have already told this that whose is used when we are talking in possessive case, right? So, this is used in possessive case, this is used in objective case. These are subjects, but this is used only for persons, this is used for things and this is used for both. Is that clear? Can we move ahead now? Okay, here is an exercise. Pick out the relative pronouns and their antecedents also. So, let us do one thing. We will just underline the relative pronoun 
and we will encircle the antecedents in these sentences. Okay, this is the doctor who saved my life. Let us pick out the relative pronoun first. Good, who? And now the antecedent. Perfect, you got it correct. Next, do you know the musician whom I met in London? Relative pronoun is? Yes. And what is the antecedent here? Wonderful, that is the musician. The, they want to visit the country that Tasha comes from. What is the relative pronoun? Yes, that is the relative. Yes, very good. The country is the antecedent. I got the perfect answer. So, I am sure the rest too you will be able to do yourself. So, I leave it on you to do this ahead. Next exercises fill in the blanks as instructed in the bracket. Dash of these students will get the prize. Now your words, uh, what relative pronoun you have to use is distributive. So, can you tell me what word will come here? Every of these, no. Each of these, yes. Each of these students will get the prize. Next, she heard. Yes, herself is the reflexive pronoun. Dash of these students is a genius. Distributive pronoun. Each of these students, very good. You can also say neither of these students. That means none of them is a genius. But let's think positive and we'll say each of these students is a genius. My brother Dash told me the secret. My brother, what do you have to use? Emphatic, that is the same as emphasizing pronoun. So, my brother, yes, himself. Time dash is lost, is lost forever. You have to use a relative pronoun. Just recall the words because here time is being used as a subject or object. As a subject, now for time, which word are you going to use? We had three words. One was that, then we had who. Then we had which. Recall what did I tell you? Why do we use each of them? And then tell me what will be the answer. Perfect. It can be time that is lost. It can be time which is lost. Both are correct. You got the correct answer children. I am happy that you have retained the difference I have told to you. So, we still have a lot to learn in pronouns. We will be coming up with yet another session on pronouns. Till then. Keep learning. Happy learning children.